All right, so took some brake clean and some paper towels, and I cleaned up all the edges of the cylinder head. I'll have to revacuum it off because as I loosened up these bolts here, um, it kind of some debris instead of dislodging. So um, I pulled these grommets up to get at the knock sensors because you have to pull the knock sensors out to get this uh, valley cover off. Um, these bolts are all 13 millimeter. Uh, I guess it's a little tricky to get on these. I was hoping I'd have a newer style engine where the knock sensors were on the side, but I don't. So, I mean, this is an 05. So, I think a couple of years a little early before the, the other ones. When I bought, I got a gasket kit from Rock Auto, and it's supposed to be a complete kit, but it doesn't have the knock sensor grommets. So, I didn't really think it out before I started that I might have to change the knock sensors, but they actually look like they were probably replaced not too long ago. I mean, this this seems like a one of the cables, or one of the connectors I saw on the Rock Auto site, so this was probably changed also. Hmm. But... Anyway, so I was thinking of replacing these knock sensors just because I have it all apart and I didn't want to redo it later. Um, part of my issue is that this kit did not come with the grommets that go under the knock sensors. So they give you this, this the gasket for the valley cover, but they don't give you the grommet or now, some people, some sites called it knock sensor grommets, and some sites called it knock sensor seals. So they don't give you the the seals or the grommets, whatever you want to call it, for that. But those have to come out to replace that. So, I mean, maybe they're reusable, but I don't really want to take this all apart and then not change that and then have that fill up with oil. So, anyway. So, continue. Um... I took these out in a reverse order, so I just kind of went around all the way to the middle like that and just loosened them up. Uh, the torque spec on these is 18 foot-pounds, and the torque on the knock sensors is 15 foot-pounds. So there's that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull those out and uh, take the cover off, and we'll come back. All right, so I cleaned this up. I... Uh, Pulled the loosen the knock sensors up. Um, there goes my drill. They were didn't drop, but it didn't break it. Probably did. I'll find out later when the code comes up. So uh, they're about 22 millimeter. Um, uh, yeah, so about 22 millimeter size and um, actually look like they were replaced not too long ago um, it was a little sloppy on there but I mean it took them out I guess as long as they're not all rusted and messed up then shouldn't be a problem with them coming out so I keep these separated so I know which one I dropped which was this one so <clears throat> when I loosen these, when I loosen these bolts up, uh, these ones in the back here, these two back, way in the back, they were actually almost loose. Like the one on the right by the oil sensor, that one was, I mean, that was probably considered loose. It was maybe finger tight or a smidge over. So I'm guessing that's probably where my oil issue is coming from was back off of the, the rear of it. Probably just loosened up a little bit. 
Um, I was thinking of changing, I mean, I changed the oil pressure sensor not too long ago when we first got it because there was, there was a problem with it. It just, it was reading maximum pressure all the time. So I changed that then and I don't really necessarily want to spend another $30 to change it again. So because I can get to it uh, without taking the intake off, I'm going to leave it for now and I'm going to see if, uh, I'm just going to change the gaskets that I got up here first. And if I continue to have a leak, then I'll try to track it down a little bit better. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the back of the valley, valley cover was my problem considering those two bolts were pretty much loose. So <clears throat> I'll pull this out and then, uh, then I'm going to clean these up and, uh, the two in the back and then, um, Start putting it back together. It's starting to get cold out. It was 30, 34 degrees this morning. I think it's only like 40 right now. I usually try to get all the stuff done before winter, before it gets cold, but sometimes the timing just isn't right. Seems like every year I'm doing this right about this time or something like this. <clears throat> or something in the winter breaks. And I'm out here in the driveway. Freezing. Just trying to fix it. Oop. I think I think these get hung up on those grommets in there pretty good. Um, you gotta get the screwdriver in the hole, and then kind of hook it and try to pull sideways with it. I mean, don't get in the threads, but get a little bit of leverage. It's better than getting. Been trying to wedge a screwdriver between the sealing surface. All right, so kind of got. I've been kind of wiggling it back and forth, but now I got a little, a little bit under there, and I'm just using these angled needle nose to kind of pry with. So I went under this crossover tube here, and I'm just kind of pulling her up. So it seems like it's just, they get stuck pretty good on that grommet in there, I guess. It's like a standoff where the, where the knock sensors go. So yeah, these are the grommets right there. They're, they're pretty stiff. So I think I want to change them just because they're a little difficult to get to. I mean, yeah. So I mean, I'll have to order some. None of the parts places have them for some reason. So I'll have to order them. Like nine dollars a piece from Advance. So, this is what we're dealing with. I think you see the cam in there. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, those two rear ones. I mean, you could kind of see the oil 
um, right, right there how it's not on the, this side of the gasket, it's on this side of the gasket because that's where it seals is around here on the inside but you can see all the oil that's right right side with this light but you can see all the oil that's on this this side of where the gasket is um i don't know if it squeezed out when i was wiggling it but it's uh kind of what i think is the problem and uh yeah it kind of concentrates back there so i mean it's tossed up between whether it's the valley cover gasket or that oil pressure sensor but uh, I'll start with this here I mean I don't, I'd almost think of taking the sensor out and then making sure nothing got under it but you know it's got a crush ring on it like a like a spark plug so once it's in there you, you're kind of committed to it so if I take it out I'm not gonna be able to use it again I think I mean I might be able to I'll have to look into that a little bit. Anyway, so I'm going to clean all this up and then uh, I'll clean up the intake. And then I guess I got to wait till I can get those grommets to continue. So that's the plug back there, or the hole where the plug was. Here is the plug. Um, it's a 10 millimeter bolt, it is torqued to 106 inch pounds. Um, it looks like the original, this has like an O-ring set in it. So, the ones that they give you are these little tabs here with this little rubber piece in it. In it. So, I guess I'm a little bit concerned that it's going to work right just because of this O-ring that's already in there. But... Because there was no, th this little seal wasn't on the engine. It basically is just a little O-ring that's in here. So I guess I'll just put this on and give it a shot. I mean, there is, there is like some squish in there. So it seems like it'll still seal. But anyway, so uh, I guess the factory service manual says that these are air bleed pipes in the front. And uh, these are just plugs in the back. But all four of them are 106 inch pounds. So I'm going to take them all out and change them all and clean up the ceiling area. And, uh, yeah. So I was looking back here, and I don't think, because, I mean, you could see on this wire on this side over here, there's uh, either oil or corn or something. I was, I was clearing it, cleaning it off with some brake clean, but... Anyway, so I'm getting fluid over here. So I was thinking if it was this oil pressure sensor, it would just be going out and down the back. It wouldn't be getting onto this side because of the way that this uh, section of the block is. It would, it basically it would just divert it out the back and not let it go out this side. But because I have some over here, I'm leaning more towards it's not the oil pressure sensor. So it just kind of helps confirm that it I don't know, probably isn't that. So, makes it a little bit easier to not replace it, is kind of what I'm saying. So, I got all the surface areas cleaned up. And I cleaned up the uh, valley cover. I changed out these grommets. They're basically just like a press and seal. You knock them out and then you uh, knock them back in. So I took some oil off the dipstick tube, off the dipstick, and I just kind of put some oil in there and put a new gasket on and put all the bolts in. And then uh, we'll stick it on top and put it back in.
All right, so I got the uh, knock sensors in. I took those to 15 foot pounds, and I put a little bead of RTV black around here. I guess uh, I mean, I guess you're supposed to. Initially, I think they said you were supposed to leave like a like a whole ring around there, but now the last thing I seen said to do like a just a ring around and then leave like a little gap in the back. I don't know what you'd leave the gap in the back for, but I left the gap in the back, so we'll give it a try. Um, so I gotta get some, some uh, blue lock tight for the, the uh, intake bolts. Uh, you torque those in two steps. Uh, first step is, um, 44 inch pounds and the second step is 89 inch pounds and then uh, you got to do like a crisscross pattern to uh, torque them down kind of like a head torque sequence all right so I got the intake gaskets on um, so I gotta put the intake back on uh, this is the let's try to block this this is the the, the uh, torque sequence so first round is 44 inch pounds, second round is 89 inch pounds. <clears throat> See if we can get back in there. I'm hoping that this all lines up right. I mean, these gaskets don't connect to the intake. They, they just kind of wrap around these bolts. So I imagine they get pushed all the way down. I think there's no real instructions with it so you just get a box of gaskets that aren't exactly like factory and you got to figure it out apparently um, anywho So I'm going to put some blue Loctite on all the bolts. Um, I cleaned them all off of the wire wheel and uh, I'm going to put them all in and then uh, we'll torque them down. All right, so here we go. Start with number one in the middle here. 44 inch pounds. I kind of snugged them a little bit by hand to get them so they weren't way loose, but one. So two is the one directly across. So the second round is 89 inch pounds. Actually, I might have to go again. I don't. That was 30. That was 40. 44.
think I turned it a smidge. So just make sure they're all at 44. That's 44, so there's 50, 60, 70, 80, yeah, whatever, I'll do 90, because I'm a renegade. Oh, oh, falling off the truck. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to run around again. Seven. back here yeah. so I'll go back over and make sure they're all Exactly. There it is. So, I got them all, all torqued down, so I'll just basically reverse order of taking it apart and put everything back together and start it up and see if it runs. Uh, check the leaks. 
So, got everything hooked up. I got all the injectors plugged back in. Um, map sense is hooked up. The fuel line plugged back in. Um, intake hose on. All the wiring hooked back up and uh, the knock sensors plugged back in. Uh, I guess the only thing I really forgot was to clip this, but I'll wait till I start it and see if it's running right before I go commit. Well, oh, yeah. You know what? I need to have a little bit of confidence. So, yeah, we'll clip that too. Um, it's a purge valve. It's hooked back up. Everything should be hooked back up. I just gotta plug the fuel pump relay in. And we should be good. Let's give it a try. Well, it seems all right. I let it run for a little bit because I, mean, I dumped a lot of the fuel out of the fuel rail before I put it back in because I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want when I had to get that that uh, purge valve or evap line back up to the purge valve. So I uh, I didn't want to dump a bunch of gas all over the place, tipping it up. So yeah. Anyway, so I hope that helps somebody. That's how you that's how you do that, I guess. I mean, there's kind of a, a couple of different things in there instead of just you know one thing. It's pretty much quite a few quite a few gaskets to change. Um, so anyway, hope that helps someone. Thanks for watching.